We are very thankful that you worship with us this morning. While we cannot be together in person, we can hear the word of God and hold each other in prayer from wherever we are. So let's take a deep breath together and invite the Holy Spirit to be among us. The spirit that connects us with one another and allows us to see the other as human beings regardless our flaws, imperfection, and the messy people we are. The spirit that gives life, the life that when it's taken away from one, affects all of us. So I have one announcement for you. It's uh, on Sunday, we have our congregational meeting. So you are all invited. It's going to be on Zoom at 7 p.m. Um, you will get uh, all the information through email, so we will send them to you. So and check your bulletin for more information about it. So we are looking forward to seeing all of you. We are here to receive Christ. We are called to proclaim Christ. We are sent to show Christ. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God. For in the beginning, your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word, you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. To the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. To the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life, and above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit, and we know our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Our opening hymn is on page 5, Jesus Calls Us, Earl the Tumult. Jesus Christ, 
the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, by grace alone you call us and accept us in your service. Strengthen us by your Spirit and make us worthy of your call through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first lesson is from the book of Jonah, chapter 3, verses 1 through 5 and 10. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now, Nineveh was exceedingly an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out, 40 days more in Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast in every one great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. Here ends the first lesson. Our psalm for today, it's Psalm 62. For God alone I wait in silence, truly my hope is in God. God alone is my walk and my salvation, my stronghold, so that I shall never be shaken. In God is my deliverance and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Put your trust in God always, O people. Put out your hearts before the one who is our refuge. Those of high degree are but a fleeting breath. Those of low estate cannot be trusted. Place on the scales together, they weigh even less than a breath. Put no trust in extortion, in robbery take no empty pride. The wealth increase, set not your heart upon it. God has spoken once, twice have I heard it. That power belongs to God. Steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord, for you repay all according to their deeds. The second lesson is from 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 29 through 31. I mean, brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as those they were not rejoicing and those who buy as though had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. Here ends the second lesson. Please pray with me. Lord of all in need, search out all who cry to you in distress. Scatter the heavy clouds of depression chronic illness, unemployment, and loneliness with your radiant light. Send us as encouragement and signs of your healing. We want to pray for these individuals, Bob, Al, Michaela, Sophia, Ken, Virginia, Don, Art, Jackie, Cecilia, Richard and Vicki, Ethel, Liam, Doris, Myrtle, Maria, Paul, Karen, Don, Tyler, Tom, Carol, Dolly, Ian, Kristen, Shirley, Pat Connor and family, Pamela, Susan, Neil, Deidre, John, and Colleen, Alyssa, Albert, Lisa, John, Sammy, Wayne, Judy, 
Gina and her mom, Melissa, Jeffrey, Claudette, and Jose. We pray for hope, comfort, help, and healing as we deal with COVID-19 in our nation and in our world. We remember especially those who are most vulnerable to, to the disease, those who are caring for the sick in their families, and all of us who are struggling with the many challenges of everyday life in a pandemic. We, um, we wanna pray that you give us your church unity, inspire all the baptized with the mind of Christ, where the church is powerful and where it struggles. Please shape us with humility and obedience so that your love may be at work in us. We pray that you unite our nation and help all people in the United States find common ground and understanding in order to heal the division in our nation. We pray for the new administration that you give them wisdom and strength to make decisions and implement plans for the common good of all of us. Lord, we remember, we pray that we remember all those who risk their lives for others in the line of duty. And we ask that you bless them and their families as they serve to protect and help us. In particular, Lord, we pray for doctors, nurses, emergency responders, and healthcare workers who need renewed spiritual and physical strength and help us all to show our gratitude and recognition to them as they continue to serve at great personal risk and sacrifice for the sake of our, our health and well-being. Regarding our benevolence for January, we pray for the drug rehabilitation work of New Life for Girls as they operate right across the street from us. We entrust the women in the program to your care, Lord, and ask that you would give them new life. We pray for our church, Lord, and for your guidance in all aspects of our ministry. We pray for Elizabeth Eaton, the presiding bishop of the ELCA, for Mark Homenrude, bishop of the Sierra Pacific Synod and the Synod staff, and for Bethel Lutheran Church, for Pastor Mitch, our church council, and BLCW board, our church staff members, our path toward meeting again in person and the people of Bethel as we worship and serve together. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. Mm -hmm. Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And he went a little farther. He saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. The 
sermon here is on page 8. You, get, you have come down to the lake shore. and peace to you, siblings in Christ. How many of you are on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, you name it? How many followers do you, do you have? Our text for today comes right after the story of Jesus' temptation in the wilderness. He goes to Galilee and there he proclaims the good news of God. That is the gospel. Jesus' first sermon is short, memorable, and direct. Time is at a crisis point. Events in the past have gathered to the point of culmination, and the kingdom of God is approaching. His words shed light backward on Isaiah's prophecy, John the baptizer's work, and the divine voice and vision at Jesus' baptism. When the heavens were torn apart, the Spirit descended on him like a dove, and the voice of God came from heaven declaring, You are my Son, the Beloved. And they also shine forward to the deeds of Jesus in the rest of the Gospel. As John the Baptist does, Jesus proclaims repent, and he preaches believing or have faith in the good news. The mysterious phrases, Kingdom of God and the good news, introduced here at the beginning of Mark's gospel, 
will be opened up and embodied in the story that follows. People whom Jesus encounters throughout the countryside will display different dimensions of faith. People like the friends of the paralyzed man, Jairus, the synagogue leader, the bleeding woman, the father of the epileptic son, and Bartimaeus, the blind beggar, will all come to Jesus from some kind of healing in Mark. The text sets the scene and introduces the brothers, first Simon and Andrew, and then James and John, and their profession for they were fishermen. Jesus' straightforward imperative, follow me, is finished with the odd formulation, I will make you fish for people. I say, it's an odd, I say it's an odd formulation, but it's also a familiar one to many of us. We think of it as God's call to mission, to bring others to Christ. In the language of mission, fishing is interpreted as the drawing, catching, and harvesting of people, followers, disciples for Christ. One kind of employment, fishing, will be transfigured into another sharing the good news and offering another kind of provision for life, not physical food, but eternal spiritual food. But today, I'd like to encourage us to expand on that and think of other images that might not have come to mind before. As we know, fish can't live outside of water. If you're a professional fisherman, fishing results in the death of the fish. So Jesus' call has been interpreted as dying to the world, which results in life unto God, something the author of the gospel clearly affirms in Mark chapter 8, verse 35. Chad Myers, in his book, Binding the Strong Man, has alerted us to another interpretation. He notes that in Old Testament passages like Jeremiah chapter 16, verse 16, Amos 4, chapter 2, Amos chapter 2, verse 2, and Ezekiel chapter 29, verse 4, cooking the fish is used to symbolize God's disapproval of the rich and the powerful, both inside and outside of Israel, who are oppressing others and opposing God. Jesus, Myers concludes, is inviting common folk to join him in his struggle to overturn the existing order of power and privilege. It's not anything safe or comfortable. Yet, Simon and Andrew respond to Jesus' call in an instant. Without further conversation, they leave their nets, the sign of their former profession. Likewise, James and John leave their father and the hired men, their fishing colleagues, to follow the preacher. In fact, without knowing all the answers, they walked down the road with Jesus, even though they didn't have a clue about what they were get, getting into. But their heart, their soul, their intuition, call it what you will, convince them of the need to do so. They couldn't, have it, they couldn't have it both ways, stay in the boat or follow Jesus. They gave up the reality of what they could see for the possibilities they had not seen and could not fully imagine. They really had lost their mind in a sense, and their families probably thought so, but it was a good thing because they'd lost their mind to Jesus and were him as the Christ whom God I sent to bring good news, the Christ who is present in the preaching, the sacraments, and the cross. Hear this, my friends. Through our baptism, the call of Christ to the disciples is the same to us now. It is a call of life-giving possibilities, the possibility to change the world in such a way that it will cease to be a hostile place so that God's reign can be established on earth. 
Doing this will require that we make a preferential option for the poor, the dispossessed, the excluded, and those who have been rendered invisible in our society. It will require that we get out and get to know our siblings in the neighborhood, whether at home, at work, or at church. In short, it will require that we change any romantic or easy view of discipleship that we have inherited for one that addresses the realities of our world in a way that will do justice to Jesus' call to follow him. Thomas Merton was a Trappist monk and a leader of inner faith and thus standing in the 21st century. His life followed the path of the prodigal son until he was saved by Christ, who turned his life around. A prayer of his has become well known and it says, My Lord God, I have no idea where I am going. I do not see the road ahead of me. I cannot know for certain where it will end. Nor do I really know myself. And the fact that I think I am following your will does not mean that I actually doing so. But I believe that the desire to please you does in fact please you. And I hope I have that desire in all that I am doing. I hope that I will never do anything apart from that desire. And I know that if I do this, you will lead me by the right road. And though I may know nothing about it, therefore will I trust you always. Though I may seem to be lost and in the shadow of death, I will not fear for you are with me always. And you will never leave me to face my perils alone. Amen. Like Merton, my friends, as we follow Christ to be fishers of people, often we will have no idea where we are going. We won't be able to see the road ahead or be certain where it will end because we never really know ourselves completely. We may not be absolutely sure that we are following God's will. However, if it is our desire in all we do to please God, to follow Jesus, then God will lead us by the right road and we can trust that even in the most difficult of times, God will be with us. will never leave us alone and we need no fear, only trust. Sure, there will, be, there will be those who think we've lost our minds and that's okay. In fact, I hope we have because perhaps that will mean that we've made room for the mind of God. May you lose your mind for God, my friend. Let us profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered on the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, wherever you are, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the time is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
God the Creator strengthen you. Jesus the Beloved fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look up on you with favor and give you peace. Our closing hymn is on page nine. Will you come and follow me? Go in peace, be safe, be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God.